hello guys so today we're just simply going to go through a simple uh short tutorial where we're looking into how you can use malta to send files from your front end or from a client side to your back end right so maybe let's say you're working on a full stack project where you want users to upload profile pictures or whatever whatever they can really upload like music or whatever the case may be so in this video i'm going to show you how you can allow users to send files uh, from their side into your server and save them into your project here and then we can have it in here but then obviously in some cases you would want to have some third uh, services where you can upload the files because uh, some of these services you want to be able to access the file system where the users can be able to send the files so you may need to use like third party services uh, like amazon you can use amazon s3 so you upload the files there and then uh you save the file path in your database something like that but then in this case we are not sending the files uh to the cloud or anywhere else we're simply saving them in our file system right so yeah that's basically what we'll be looking at in this short video uh yeah please hit the subscribe button and the like button and let's get started okay so uh i have an empty project here i've opened it with my visual studio and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open the integrated terminal here so we can uh, uh, initiate or initialize our node project right and uh, i think also you need to have a node installed on your machine to be able to run this uh this this command right now that we have the terminal open here let's hit npm uh init and do y so that it doesn't ask us a lot of questions and yeah so why is it not running so there we go it created us uh it created this package so it created this uh package the json file for us right so now we can go ahead and install all the we can go ahead and install all the the the, the libraries that we're gonna need in our project right did i create did it create it twice oh fine um so what are we gonna need in our project if we're gonna npm install we're gonna need express so we're gonna like uh do the whole project using the express server we're gonna note more note more for refreshing so we don't actually have to restart the server each and every time we make changes to our files and then we're also gonna need the file that we're going to use to be able to send files from our client a from our front end or our client to the server so this will actually help us to save those files so we need uh express notemon and malta and then you can hit enter to install these packages and then one other thing that we need uh you're gonna need to have some sort of a uh, client that you can use for testing so for us we're gonna use postmon so postman so you're gonna need to use postman and yeah you need to install it if you don't have it uh, so you can be able to test as we are doing our project here so uh, i have a collection here created i'm just going to add the request here and say uh what should i call it uh, i shouldn't call it anything and actually let's just leave our postman for now and then actually start with our project in here so we have installed all those three packages that we need so let's set up a file here i'm going to use a file name it index.js in the package.json you need to go into our scripts here so we're going to have a script that will run our file so i'm going to call it dev and then this dev script will basically do node mon index.js let me close the terminal okay so um let's start with our function uh let me export express require express and also let's multi that we're gonna use require constant app express and let's run it here oh no i can see the auto completion was not working so on listen on 3000 uh, I have a function here which simply consoles listening on 3000 
so we've simply set up our express server here which listens on 3000 um so what i want us to do is simply create a okay let's also create a folder here where we're going to save the file that gets uploaded right so we're going to upload them on the public folder um also so now that we have set up our express here um we can also have something like uh we, so we're going to upload the files on a post request uh on upload um i have a function request and response here and i'm simply gonna say response message uploaded loaded the file to the server yeah i don't know okay there's an error here so so this is what we have right so we need to set up malta so that it knows the files that we are uploading and where it should actually save them right so let's have some sort of uh a small in a middle way here we're gonna say constant malta or upload let me call it upload we're gonna say malta dot a dot and then go into malta here so there's a dest uh, property here that we can use so the dest property basically means where you want to save the file so we're gonna say we want to save the file in the public folder and then we grab the file that we upload uh from the object that is being sent to us right so since the user is doing a post request we're gonna have some sort of a body and then the body will contain files right will contain like uh different data let's say this is a body uh we're gonna have a file uh we're gonna have sorry we're gonna have a file here uh we're gonna have maybe the name um maybe you are also uploading what uh maybe you are also uploading uh, the user id or something like that something that is being sent from the user i mean from the client yes from the user so we're saying from the request uh our body what do you want to extract from it uh, uh we're gonna extract the file we're gonna extract the file from the request body uh with using its field name right uh so this is what we're gonna do is a single and so on that request uh body we're gonna try to get a file called image right so and then now we can actually get take this upload function upload function or a middle way and put it here so this function upload will run before this one so it will essentially upload our file to the public folder then it will run the upload the file uploaded the file to the server all right so let me save this and up and open another terminal here so we can run and remember we're going to use a, a postman to be to simulate our client so we're going to pretend this is our client or our front end so we're going to use it to send the files why is it taking time to open the terminal so we can do run dev as we set it up in the package.json here um so it should run our file or it should run our server it should set up our server here and then what we're going to do is go in here at a request uh go to local and then we're gonna say local upload so which is gonna be local host upload and then this is gonna be a post request and then in the body we're gonna use uh the form data so usually you might be using raw uh with json but there's no way that you could send a file using this so we're gonna use the form data and then the key here we're gonna say this is a file and then the field name the field name of this file we're gonna call it image and then here we can select the file that we want to upload so i'm just simply going to select this file here and send uploaded the file to the server right so we get a response that the file was uploaded to the server and then if you check the folder here the public folder uh we have a file that was uploaded but there's a problem with it because it doesn't know it doesn't even have any uh file extension right so that's why we cannot really see what's going on with this file so it means we need to go back to the malta uh to this malta library here and extend what we are actually trying to do with it right so we can use some sort of configuration let's say config config 
malta the disk storage so this disk storage function will help us to do a few things right uh, one of them is the destination so you can be able to handle this so we're gonna say request file so we get it has access to the request the file damn it and the callback function and then we're simply gonna say so essentially when there is a there is an error you need to pass in the error in the callback function but we don't have anything so we have to pass in null and then we also have to pass in the destination of our file so the destination is the public uh the other thing that we need to handle okay sorry so the other thing that we need to handle is the file name do you see that the file was saved but uh the file was saved but it doesn't have a name it doesn't have a file extension we don't know if this is a pdf or video or an image right so we need to be able to handle that using a function called file name so the same thing uh so the same thing as this it takes in the request the file and then the callback function so here you can extend uh how you want to save the file not by just simply say go to the public folder and put the file there so we can say uh we want the file to be saved with this type of name and blah 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 so let me gonna say this is the file file name no let me do it like this file name is gonna be uh sorry it's gonna be the file dot field name so the field name is this one the field name is image so we're gonna say we want to save it to using image uh you also have original name original name is this one which was sent from the client although uh the field name is the one that uh you gave it in your form data so we're just gonna use the field name because sometimes you see like this one you won't know what it is so we know every file that comes with uh, every file that has an image we know it was handled by us so file name uh, file.field plus and then the other thing is if you look at this file this file does not have an extension right we need to be to be able to handle that so we need to save this file with its file extension so how we're gonna do that is let's import path here uh, require path and then we're gonna say this field name plus path extension name so this extension name function will return the extension of the file so if we pass in file dot original name in here original name so we know this line here will return uh the extension of the original name remember this is the original name of the file we are handling so whatever this is dot jpeg so the extension will be returned the jpeg will be returned and we're gonna concatenate it here so we're gonna have something like this the field name is what we call it image so we're gonna have image plus uh the extension name of this file so which is jpeg so we're gonna have something like uh dot uh, jpeg which will give us image dot so we're going to end up having something like this with this line and then we say take this and save it uh, into our public folder so we're going to use the callback function which takes in an error and an null so for a null it means there is nothing and then it also takes in the file name which is this one here so we can simply say file name and true save so now we need to use this config into our malta so right so we no longer need this test alone here remove it and say storage storage configuration is this one save so we know the file will be saved in the public folder and then it will be saved with the image.jpg or whatever the file extension of that file whatever the file extension is right so if you save this uh listening Ever listening on portrait dot so if i run this again uh send file uploaded to the server and then if you look at here we have the file that is has been uploaded right but 
uh if you look at the file name here it says image.jpg so if someone uploads a file it will still give it the same name so it will overwrite this one so you need to be able to handle that so let's say for every file that gets uploaded we attach uh, a date object on it, on it so that uh, a new value gets created every time so this will always create a new date and then we can take that date concatenate it to the name and then uh and then uh we make sure that this name is not just image it's going to be the image and the date uh the jpeg so we know the file will not override each other so let me say to the string so we know uh whatever the name of the file is will never override what it finds in here uh but before i actually do that let me remove this uh so let me show you something so we have a file here which is this one if i upload a file which is not this one it will overwrite it and just save it in it uh take this okay let me save this one if i open it here you see it overridden the last one so that's why we actually need to have some sort of a way that make sure that the names never really uh conflict or the file never overread override each other so we're going to use the date then let's say to string here so with the with the two um with the date we know the file will contain the image and then the date so we know every time a file gets uploaded this dot nay uh date dot now will always generate a new uh, value right and a value that was previous uh that is different to the previous one so now if i try to upload uh we should be able to see there is a new file that gets created because it does not override this one so there we go we have a file that does that and then even if we create if we send another one we're still gonna see we created a new file so it means we have uh a figure a way to actually uh send the files to a public folder but then we can still do more with our malta so we can do some sort of filtering right so filter is a function also uh takes in the same things here uh, what's going on here uh let me not use the auto completion here so we're gonna use request file and the callback right so we want to filter we want to filter every file that gets sent to us that is not an image right so i want to have an array here constant image types uh image types uh png no uh jpeg and we're gonna have this okay let me explain it this way with the file filter function we are filtering the files that we don't want right so if a file that gets uploaded and does not match any of the image types in here we're going to reject that file we're not going to upload it right so let me just close this we don't need to see it so we have the image types that we need right or we want or that we accept right these are the types so if a file that gets uploaded and does not match any of these we're going to reject it so let's have it here we're going to say if oh no why is it writing this code for me so yeah that's basically it so if the image type that we have here this is an array uh does not include uh the file type so this is the file that gets uploaded right and that we are saying uh the type of this file if it does not match any of these we are simply going to say an error here we're going to return an error we're going to pass in an error into our callback function so this callback function we just simply say yo you have uploaded a uh, a wrong file uh based on the file type and then so we cannot uh, con uh continue with this so uh, maybe if the user was trying to upload a profile picture and then it's a video so you're simply going to say yo we don't need videos as your profile picture right because yeah you might have done some validation on your client side or on your front end you still need to do the same thing with your uh if with your server right so don't just trust that uh if the client said it's okay so your server should just upload everything right so say here we're saying if the file type is not any of these uh reject that file and then we're gonna do the same thing uh with the file size right we're gonna say uh so 
uh, let's do something like this so um you cannot do request dot file okay let me do this let me say else if file dot size if this file dot size is greater than maybe let's assume greater than 2 mb um 2 mb or just 1 mb so we're simply gonna say maybe error file too too large too huge yeah too large whatever so we're simply saying if the file size is greater than this value we simply want to say oh no you have uploaded a, we are uploading a huge file so we actually actually want a file that is less than 1 mb right and then if any of these is false right this if, if any of these is false we're simply gonna call our callback function which is this with nothing and then maybe true true meaning we accept the file right and then here we can simply pass in the false uh meaning we don't know we don't accept the file no not here uh yeah so we are simply saying we don't accept the file so let's do this so let's send a file that is not of this type and see if we get any error so let me try to select something else i have an svg here send we are getting some type of error right so it means we we did not upload the file as you can see we did not upload it did we we did not let's see yes we did not upload anything so we're getting an error here because it says invalid file type but it means we did not handle our 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 exception very well so the error that gets thrown here we did not handle it very well in here so we should be able to handle that but before we actually do um let's see if for file size right so let me select a file that is uh okay for our file type but then the size is huge right i think i have a file here if you want this one let me send it well this is uh malta behaves funny uh pff, let me explain this so the way malta works is you cannot do this uh file dot size won't work the same way with the file type because you're saying uh at this time at the time this function runs the file has not yet been uploaded to the server or to the file system so this size would actually be null but there's a way there's a way uh, to hack it around right so you can simply do uh the size or say file size is equal to request headers and then content yeah you can actually do this so content length however this will return uh this will return a value wait let me save it okay so this will return a value uh which is not a uh which is not a number so it's gonna return a string so let's pass this into a number and then put it here so now with this file size we can actually come here and put it like this so i hope this works let me see send this okay maybe still loading let's give it a few minutes the server is still restarting okay send again wait a minute why am i getting an error invalid file type get um let me do it like this and see if i'm winning uh servers listening run file too large so so it means now we can actually uh we can actually get the file size of this uh file that we are sending uh let me show you something why i did it like this so if i console out log the file dot size file dot size 
save uh let's wait for it to run so let me send it this uh if you look at our code here um okay no this is before okay let me extend this so you see where we consoled out the file size where we consoled out this file size we got an undefined so you cannot really do god damn so you, you cannot you cannot really do you cannot really do file dot size in this file filter function so it's better if you do this way or you could have uh there's a, a an uh, an object here or a property limit which you can pass in or you can extend your filtering right your filtering system and then you can see uh you are allowed to have some sort of restrictions on the file size the fields is the number of fields that you want to contain the files so if you have more than three fields that have or more than two fields actually more than one field that contain a file you can simply say no this is not allowed we only want a file maximum number of nine five oh number of nine this is that for nine fields right so but then yeah you get the point so you get the idea so the file size we also have the file size let me do this so the file size is the maximum size of each file in bits so this is the like the number of bits or the number of like the size of the files that you accept into your server being uploaded so but then i prefer to do it this way we get the content uh the content length you from the headers and then we check the size uh simply like this so we are seeing we only want a file that is less than 1 mb to be uploaded on our server so if it's bigger than that so let me just make it 5 so anything above 5 mb will return a file too large however if you look at our response here it's not pretty right so we need to be able to handle the errors way much prettier than this so that's why we need to have another function or a sort of a middleware which will handle the functions or handle the errors for us so how are we going to do that i'm simply going to define a function here called malta middleware so this middleware so you know like any other middleware will take a request the report the response and the next function and then down here i'm just simply going to call the next function right so above here what i'm gonna do is um so yeah you know what let me remove this so what i'm gonna do so in this multi function what you need to do is call this upload function you need to call this upload function right um the upload function takes in a couple of things the request the response and then the next function or just a, a callback let's call it a callback so we're gonna pass in the request the response and the callback which will expose the error to us the error if we get any error right so we're gonna say if we have an error which is an instance of malta dot malta dot error so if we get an error which is an instance of this so we know the error was not thrown by us so we can return and say oh no you oh we have encountered some sort of an error right so this is this will essentially say let's do this but i don't want this no i don't want this so in this case we can assume the error was sort of like an uh server error so we can tell them the the, the user and say um something went wrong something went wrong uploading your file uploading your file right so this is when the error is an instance of malta error so maybe malta had some sort of exceptions uh but we can also do if error so if this is not true so but then we still have an error we're gonna say uh return we can simply no 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 so in here we're just simply gonna say message dot error and we get the message so the message here on the error object 
will be either one of these right so it's going to be an invalid file type or a file too large but then and then in a case where uh, the error was neither of these we we would assume that the error would have been thrown by malta and then we're just simply going to say something went, went wrong with uploading your file right so yeah that's it and then if any of this is false we simply need to we simply need to move into the next uh my, uh next middle way sorry so i'm just simply going to take this multi middle way here and replace upload with it because we are already using upload in this middle way so now if i continue to send that file actually now it's gonna be uploaded because i moved this so if i change the size to one here so we make it one b if i send so you see we're getting a much better error message so we say message file to uh file too large and then if we return the 5 mb but we choose a file which uh we do not we don't accept its uh type we send this and then we say we're getting a file with a message with an invalid file type so it means the way we are handling errors is much better right uh let me see something i want to see if i can really create uh some error which is not uh, no how can i do this i don't know but then this won't be a multi error yeah um yeah so but in get an idea right so and then let me see so let me up uh, let me just send this without any file right so we are simply saying send this but don't send the image so this malta will try to access the image and it won't find it on our request.body object right so let me send this and then it says your file was uploaded so there's something wrong so there was no file that was uploaded because we did not send anything i think if we come here and say if the request.file so we are trying to access the file right so if there is no file we can do some sort of an error message again here uh let me take this one so we are saying if on this request object there is no file uh say please upload your file or your image right let me actually be consistent and say your file so we are saying if there is no file on this request object send a response to the user and say yo you need to upload your file right instead of just replying with the uploaded the file to the server even though it was not uploaded so if i send you see please upload your file because your image wait what so i did not save this yes uh, I, would, I had not saved this so that's why you are still saying image so if i send this again uh please upload your file so it means we have uh, uh we have checked the file so if there's no file that was uploaded you're gonna say yo you need to upload your file uh if there's an error we're simply gonna uh check the errors that we have in here and then we handle that right so that's basically it so just like that you've managed to send a file from your client to the server and then also you can actually uh handle many files at the same time let me delete the ones that we have in the public folder already so if you want to handle more than one file you can simply have a function here there's a couple of functions in here we have any array and file so any will array will take multiple files and then it will upload them right and then we can go back here uh but wait before you actually do that you need to change a few things right so here we are saying array so we no longer have to deal with file we need to deal with what files and then we're saying if files dot length is less than one so we are saying please upload your files so we know uh in this instance we know we are expecting what uh, more than one file so we'll say we'll have to say please upload your files uh let me remove this send uh cannot read property of alpha defined 37 
uh oh yes so the files are not defined um let me let me do this uh let's debug uh console out lock dot request dot files and we wait for it to run running send uh um okay cannot read undefined of length so at this point we know oh so at this point let me see again at 47 so at this point it's denying the okay so we know the files are not there okay so i'm gonna simply do this um Uh, send please upload your file so you need to check if there is no file so we know there is no files uh, if we do it like this right and then the other thing we need to do is um what is it if you want to upload many files that you need to consider um okay yeah i think this is it so let's try to upload multiple files at the same time select files I'm gonna select one, two, uh, three, and okay. Send uploaded the files. So we're gonna say uploaded the files instead of the file, right? Uploaded the files to the server. And then we can see here we have uploaded three files. And then the other thing is once Malta uploads your file to the file system, right? You can be able to access that. So you can be able to access more information about those particular files or that particular file in your response here so let me give you an example here uh, i'm no longer going to do the files i'm just simply going to do file so if you don't have any file uh please upload your file or we can do files like this uh like that and then let's say you want to access the file path of the file that was uploaded where it was saved you can do file dot request dot file and then you can see you still you have uh, access to the file that was uploaded right so there's a path there's original name so if you say path and save this and let's go back to our post more postman and send that please upload your files what did I do? Oh, an array. So I have to say single here. Um, service running, great send. Something went wrong uploading your file. So it means we got some sort of an exception. You see now the error that happened here was not us basically because it came from here but then we can try again and look at what the error could be um what's going on what else did we change oh yeah i'm sending too many files at the same time when i said i'm only expecting one right so you can also do that you can also have a way i don't know if we, we can do filter uh with the limits i think there's also some limits you can do with limits uh the limits or property takes in a few things you can also say files so let's see what does it say number of files uh um file size they say fields uh felt size there's a couple of things that you can do actually to limit the number of files that get uploaded all right so we're just gonna leave that out um so yeah that was it uh i just wanted to oh i wanted to actually upload the file and show you that it actually gives you access to that particular file 
in this request file so you have uh you still have access to that file in here right so for example let's say uh before you actually send data to the server you're gonna check if that file has been uploaded you're gonna say file if this exists you know the file has been exit uh, has been uploaded and then you can go ahead and do some db uh, stuff in here right so imagine the user uploads uh maybe you set a file right you want to save some details to the server and then before uh, you want to send some detail some details to the server but before you actually save them right you have to make sure that file has already been uploaded so if that file fails to upload you cannot send that data that is related to the file to the database without the file being uploaded right so you can have something like this uh, and do some db stuff here so you know the file has been uploaded right so that's why uh, you you can still be able to ha have access to the file path like this so if i send this oh, please upload your files what did i do damn it oh okay open this send and then you see now we have uh the file path is public images blah 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 and then you can actually handle you can actually uh, uh have access to this let me have another request in here add a request and then we just simply gonna go to localhost uh public and then we do get obviously we won't be able to get that particular file because we did not allow users to have access to we do not allow users to have access to the public folder so we can allow it like this and say app dot use um and then the public so in the public we're just simply gonna say express oh no it's writing this code for me um so we simply say uh in this folder public So we simply say uh okay what's going on one two three so i have to have another one here so we simply say uh for every path that matches path we simply going to allow that user to have access to that particular uh to have access to this path here so here we are returning uh the path right so we are saying ah uh, so we are saying sorry so we are saying go into uh so this path okay let me just say this this here will return our current path right so it's gonna be c drive blah 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 desktop until we are in this file we are up until we are in this folder and we will say in this folder go into a folder called public right so this will essentially be our path that gets uh, generated from this line and then we are saying allow allow users to have access to it with this th so I, if i send this i should be able to get that file that was uh, uploaded right so for example you want to request uh, the uh you want to have access uh, of these images from your server so you can, you'll be able to say a uh, local host public and then the image name right so let's try to upload another one here upload another one actually let me upload a different file upload a different file this one send and then now we have the file path right file path come in here and put it here and send oh no so you see now we have uh access to that file that we sent uh just now so yeah that's basically it. let me go back here to this so yeah basically that's how you can actually uh allow your front end to be able to send files to your back end simple as that uh right so i'm just gonna make this code available on github if you wanna go it through and yeah please please don't forget to hit that subscribe button oh.